On the season finale of Chasing LA. I'm like, where do we start? So did you say that about Jeremy or you didn't say that about Jeremy? Miss Kwan is the one who brought the whole porn set up to me. Are they real friends or are they not? So, so let's see, why she brought you? So she was trying to set up Jeremy because you know, she was talking to me and stuff. Saying like, oh, Jeremy had went off on me because I made the OnlyFans. Wait, 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 wait. Do you have the OnlyFans? Wait, oh. See, I don't know if she a good friend, Dee Honestly, at this point, you. baby boy is a bully. Jayla, I understand that you are a struggling, <laughs> burning <laughs> hell, respectfully, dusty, crispy critter. I have never had a drink thrown in my face, ever. I am still reeling that Jayla had the nerve to throw a drink in my face. Like, you fucking bum ass bitch. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the death of a friend. Say the real thing. Oh, thank you. You finally say my name. When you're doing bullshit, snake shit. Who's doing bullshit, snake shit? You. You act. Yo, shut the fuck up. No, you're not gonna tell me to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I don't care. I don't care. Let me go. I don't care. I don't care. The bitch collide. I don't care. I'm going home. I have no reason to lie, but you're the one wanting to walk off. I sat there and listened to your bullshit, but you're walking off. Y'all get the fuck out of here. So, it's not you can't be talking to people like that. What did he do? No, I'm not at you. You're telling me shut the fuck up. I mean, because at the end of the day, he is attacking my shit. And this bitch is lying. He's lying. The bitch is messy. Why are you so messy? I have no idea. Why you took that route to take a conversation that you and I, as what I thought were friends, had in confidence, and then to run to Mr. Copeland and spill that tea? I have no idea. I don't share my business with a lot of people. I really thought you were my friend, but I'm glad to know at this point that you really just ain't about that life and you're really full of shit. So once again, in timely fashion, Quan has left the building. I'm glad him and D. Hawkins tried to have whatever conversation they were going to have, but please don't direct it towards me. I see the conversation leading towards Jeremy Copeland. Leave Jeremy out of it. I'm here for King. I'm not here for the drama. D. Hawkins, please stop talking to me. I'm all your fist. Check that out. I'm all your fist and check it out. I know. Like, girl, what the fuck do I gotta lie for? I don't give a yeah. fuck about you and Jeremy doing what. What do I have to lie for, girl? Yeah. At this point. I'm over it, I'm done. At this point, I now just see red. My mind is going everywhere. I'm dealing with the death of a friend of over 10 years that I haven't been able to even mourn. So at this point, it's time for me to go. And but you don't even know what I've been dealing with and going through. I'm just fucking tired. There's a lot going so on. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm done. Yeah. Fuck this, fuck the show. I don't need it. Girl, she can keep it, she can have it. Bitch, my talent will shine on its own. Yeah. I don't need it no more. You can have it. Done. I'm fucking done. At this point, it's kind of tired to me. Like, again, we all just met each other. So whatever Quan felt like he received, he was in a rock and a hard place. And he was trying to share the information with other parties before he looked like he was in the middle of it. Now he in the middle of it. Either or, I'm just over the argument. If Jeremy and uh, D. Hawkins have decided they're no longer talking, I don't understand why we're still screaming at each other. Mm. The fly, I'm sorry. What's the problem? Again, my issue was never that you had on underwear. My issue was never- You said about the- He hit, 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 hit me up in my knee. I, I know what you're about to say, go ahead. So if the guy I'm talking to posted his ass video without a, without a, nothing was tagged, no underwear was tagged, do you it, was just, it was just a, it, it was just an ass picture. And so in the car, I said, well, do you see how that can upset someone that you're talking to that you posted your ass picture on? If you go to my Instagram, I got dick prints all over, but it's tagged. Now, quite honestly, even to this day, I still don't understand, Jeremy, why you were so upset 
about that old vibe of the hate post because you and I both know you quick to put your dick print with a nice pair of underwear on social media and I'm quick to show this big old ass honey there's no shame there why 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 would you take it upon yourself to listen to people that actually are thriving for a moment I don't understand now we might not have been on the best terms but my god come on you're Mr. Copeland, right? Now, Jeremy, you say who we're talking. This is not about. This is not about. Wait, this is about you and Quan. This is not about. Wait, 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 I'm not wait, addressing wait, wait, us. Wait. Is y'all talking? Is y'all not we're talking? We're not. Was y'all dating? No. How long? We were not dating. Like I said, we were only getting to know each other in a massive way. We're not dating. We all just met. King, stop coming and asking all these questions. So now you acting like Fly King, just lay, tied through, and delayed. Stop asking all these questions if you miss it. 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 Stop asking these questions. If you missed it, you was inside, stay inside. We all trying to hash this out. It just makes it worse. I love you, but shh. King, we already discussed. You had left early Friday. This was already discussed. But so when I asked, no, but when I asked, I asked. Because this was the thing. It's beyond that. It's been the thing, okay? It's been the thing. Everybody been wanting to know, has J Jeremy Copeland and D. Hawkins been fucked? They okay, where were you? Yeah. It's been a thing. So I asked you. I asked you. Time. You said no. That was not oh, I asked you. Look, I asked you. Look, I asked you. You said no. I thought you more than I asked D. I asked D. It was the same day. D said. Okay. Okay. Fuck more than one. When I asked D. <laughs> now, you act like we, we took a break. Out. It's the same thing. You, when I asked D. Hungry. You act like we only hung out one time. No, I never said that. I said we fucked one. You asked me. Okay, but that's not even the biggest Why are you talking to me? I didn't come to talk to you. Because I want to. Let me ask a group of questions. No. No. Can I ask a group of question? Yeah. Have I ever came to anyone Ooh, in here? Friend. Hold on one second. Ray, Ray, one second. Oh, um, with Andre. I brought my friend. Andre, come here. I got a question. I brought my group. friend. Have I ever? Andre, Jayla King, and Fran and Hershey. Have I ever came to any of you and said anything negative or anything about D. Hawkins? No. So to say that I'm the reason why this is happening, no one would have known nothing. Had you not had the conversation, and I understand that you thought that was your friend at the moment, but what I'm saying is to say that this is my fault. But I never well, let me finish. Well, let me finish. You just made a comment and just said this is all happening because of me. No one would have never known. No, shit. I said because of Warren. I've said that multiple times. I said the reason we are. At this all I'm point saying is I never negatively spoke about you ever, and, and I never said the you same. same. And I've so never respectfully stop fucking talking to me. And I've never negatively spoken about you. You're still so talking to me. I asked you not to. Okay, but I'm still gonna say what I want to say. But you said. What you want to say, and I respect it. Yeah, so have the so so thing. You can call me whatever you want to do. Step out of character. Yeah, show that shit that, that you don't want people to see. Though. Bring it out. Stop. Show that side of you you don't want people to see that you beg him to bring on camera. So show that side of you that bipolar ass shit that you didn't want to come out to the public. So I hear D. Hawkins call me bipolar. Let me say this mental health issues is real out here. There are people that deal with being bipolar, it's a real thing. You cannot call a person bipolar because they won't tolerate your disrespect. You cannot call someone bipolar because you're doing shady shit off camera and we now have brought it to camera and because I'm reacting on camera, now I'm bipolar. You're a bunch of different things. You're an interior designer, an OnlyFans, a porn star, an artist now. You make turtlenecks with cheetah print and all this other bullshit going on. You need to call nobody nothing because I'm not bipolar. Hi, so, okay, let me ask this. That was a great okay. scene. Can y'all don't edit that? Let me ask this. Woo! Don't skirt. If you want to be respected, you're going to respect me too. So don't tell me to stop fucking talking to you because you're going to hear me also. Understood? Jeremy, can I have your attention? All due respect. You know, and we've talked about this, when that incident in my car happened outside of your apartment, you know that that was shy of a week and a half after that whole assault situation that I had from the last person I was talking to Ooh. at my home. So you know that emotionally I was devastated. So right. pick your So I mean, at the end of the day, and pick you apologize your me for that. That's why I said there wasn't an issue with us. Quan right. caused this shit. Right. May I ask a question? And, I, and, I, and, it, and it hurts me that you allow Quan to step in and, and create some drama between us. There was no issue between you and I until Quan brought that shit up so he could have a moment. And you gotta be messed up. That's all it was. People with painted spirits and holes in their soul. Would you be willing to accept an apology and be able to move forward? Yes. yes. Now yes. that you know the real. Uh, what's the if? I'm sorry. Hang on, hang on. Talk Let's to me first. What's the if? If you would have just said, okay, yeah, that it, it got to you the wrong way, I would have been like, okay, you denied it at first. You kept denying it, denying it. When and then this? when I asked you, well, what did you say? You said, well, all I said to him was, if you don't mind bringing it up. Whether you said- I never said that. Are you talking about, are you, you talking about Andre and Ian's event? 
because that's the only time we had a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm just saying that let's speak on the truth. Right. We never had a conversation prior to that. That caught me so off guard that night, Jeremy. What did you say to him verbatim? I have said this I, so many no, times. So, that I can, so I, what I said to him verbatim uh -huh. is when he brought that to my attention, mm -hmm. I expressed to him in that moment, wow. I said, if you feel like this needs to be brought to the forefront, feel free. It feels as though you have many talents. I would much rather you just stay over there and I stay over here. And okay, now we're done, right? No, we're not done. I'm gonna say what I want to say. You oh, well, I'm gonna go outside. I don't and still don't believe that I owe D. Hawkins any apology because all Jeremy did was defend himself. No one would have never known what was happening had you not one running your mouth trying to get a storyline. I don't owe you anything. I didn't attack you. I didn't attack your character. And what happened in the car, you got an apology for that. It is what it is. But for this, no. I'll take yours though. Thank you. Can we have like a like a like a fun event? We talking about all these third I mean, third party people said this and said that. I mean, I have I have nothing to say about the situation. To be honest, I just both of you guys are wrong. So I'm here at King Payne's event, and the girls now want to talk about the drama that happened at the Love and Hate Mixer. I'm not ready to talk about it. I'm kind of over it, but since the girls want to talk about it, here we go. Roll out the red carpet. Let's talk about it. But I think throwing a drink on me in my face is an ultimate level but you of disrespect. disrespect to her. You no, told her to I get didn't. the fuck out. No, I told you if you cannot Ooh. respect but me, you, you can get the fuck out was proportionate to throwing a drink on someone. That's what I think I'm was asking. Day, like, <laughs> her throwing a drink was just her reaction, but she didn't no. do it. But she didn't do it. Babe, I'm sorry. That's nothing, the way. She didn't do it just because nothing happened. He still disrespected her. Let me say this. My gift is a present. My gift is a present. Okay? So my presence is a gift. So Andre blurts out that we need to respect his presence. Bitch, please. Andre needs to sit his motherfucking ass down, bitch. That's what the fuck he needs to do. If you don't respect me and my presence, and then do with me. Oh, oh, and that's just so weird. Okay. That's so weird. That's so weird. Okay, bye, girl. And that's just so weird. Good night. So I'm about to get up from the table because I don't give a fuck what the fuck he's saying. It doesn't matter at this moment. But before I do get up, I'ma let his motherfucking ass know one thing, bitch, and I'm from Southeast DC. And when I say something, I motherfucking mean it. Today is not the motherfucking day, cause today you would get sliced and motherfucking diced. Me! What the fuck is going on? Oh my God, I came with Andre. I had no idea you guys were beefing. Look. So you know, I'm being graceful. I don't want to be associated with Andre. But for some reason, Mr. Ray still brought in Andre. Now, as soon as Andre seen me, Andre goes, what's up, bitch? And I didn't say nothing to Andre because at the end of the day, these hands is waiting for Andre. So I go out front to get some air. Mr. Ray comes out there and we're having a conversation about the whole situation of why there's so much tension between me and Andre. Basically, he was basically like, you can get the fuck up out of here. And I was like, I'm not going nowhere. And he was like, party. Yeah, and I was like, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not, because I don't want to argue with you. Because he was trying to tell me like, oh, if you don't like what I got to say, you can get the fuck out. I was like, I'm not arguing with this nigga. And he was like, well, you can get the fuck out. And so when he said that, it triggered me. I'm like, nigga, yeah. I ain't, I've been around celebrities. I mean, you've and been at the parties with me, bitch. Right. I've never been kicked out of no place. Nowhere. They love me. Love you. That's so why I'm like, so I got upset. I stood up and I threw a drink at this nigga. You got me fucked up. Don't ever disrespect me. I didn't say that. I feel bad because I'm friends with the both of you. Like, I'm older than both of you, but like, what started, like, what led to that argument even? He didn't like that. He came for King. Is that the gentleman that was? Um, Whose event this is? This is event. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whose event this is? He came for King first. Yeah. Tell him he can get the fuck out. He can get the fuck out of his event. This that very the same problem. fucking like 20 minutes later, he was telling, he was yelling at Quan, telling Quan, you can get the fuck out. You can get the fuck out. Then Quan left. So a good 30 minutes go by. Now you're now you're telling me I can get the fuck out. Like what the fuck did I do to you? He watched a lot of Martin growing up. That was the problem. Like the way he talked to her and then Like what did I do to you? The problem with this group is everybody wants to be heard, but nobody wants to listen. That's the issue. And had everybody just taken a second to breathe 
and listen to what the other person is saying, the miscommunications will be cleared up. Wait a minute, bitch. I'm not even here with who I came with. So wait a minute, let me get a bite of a taco, another shot of tequila, I but we're it. definitely gonna sell this tonight. Yeah. Like, I need my I don't need y'all. Come on, sit down to the taco. I just don't need no. I don't know. Hold on, come inside your taco. We're gonna handle this, okay? All right, baby. Now, Frank, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Is it fair for her to say, you know what, to apologize for throwing the drink and for you to apologize for what am I apologizing for? Because it was still disrespectful to take it the fuck out. But so, you had to, to think the group. about it. I'm not saying to yeah. her. Mm -hmm. Can you apologize to the group? Because a couple of us felt Absolutely. like, well, dang, I, just, I would just sit here. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that can be that. I feel Absolutely. like I feel like going into logistics is going to be a fight of who Absolutely. did what. Now, I'm trying my best to understand where Jeremy is coming from with regard to an apology to the group. But I'm going to do my best to give it a listen and see what makes sense. But one thing I know for sure is that I'm definitely owed an apology. And if some apologies can't be issued out to me as well, then I don't know how far this is gonna get. And now, I feel like we could be doing better. Yeah, let's practice that now. Instead of going in depth, and I know you have a lot of ways to do it. You should probably just call everybody in just and recap. Boom, what happened and be done. Don't feel like you have to. I feel like I'm in a disadvantage no matter what I do. No, you not. No, yeah, even just now I felt that I was respectful in how I talked to you. I just how But But do you get how that makes me oh. at a disadvantage because then that makes me like I am this person. And the reality of it is, is she threw a drink on me. So both of them are wrong because you know I can say that because I saw what happened. But I'm gonna always choose my girl side, Jayla. So I'm definitely gonna say that Andre was wrong more than Jayla for sure. I just had a conversation with her where like they deserve the space to speak without you interrupting. And everybody was. And you throwing a drink at me is disrespectful. So it. if we can just, up, if we can acknowledge yeah. that and for her to own that, I can move forward. I don't know what's happening right now. It feels like the group is trying to have like an intervention or something. Everybody is literally trying to tell me that I need to apologize for my behavior when I feel like I was absolutely provoked in many situations that night. I'm listening, I'm trying to digest it all, but honestly, I'm starting to feel a little triggered because everybody's talking to me, everybody's coming at me, and all of a sudden, I'm the only person that's wrong here. Like, I can move forward. And, and but you if can we all do your part too, right? I can own Perfect. my part. Perfect, so we can end it right there, and we can bring everybody in, and they can come in, right? And just say a cordial. Just say a cordial apology, address that for that, and allow her, allow them to have they an apology. And here's the thing, if you don't get one, that's not why you apologize. Then you know why, you, you know what to me more from that. And that's that. And how do you feel about that, honestly? It's very... It's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. What's a lie? It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. What's the part that's a lie? The part that's a lie to me is because I feel like even right now in this show, that it's everybody's trying to tell me what I should do. No. No, 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 no. I gotta go. No, I just... 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 If people throw a drink at my face and disrespect me and they ain't gotta be accountable. That's not what we're saying. I gotta go. I gotta go. I just can't. I just can't. Because these bitches don't throw a fucking drink at my face and then tell me that I gotta be accountable. I am literally completely overwhelmed with emotion and I need to get out of King Lame's little peer space event because I'm about to lose it. I really don't know what my space is with this group, how I'm feeling, and right now, everybody just better stay away. Coming up on Chasing LA. So I pulled out my knife because, like I said, nothing's happening today. It's not happening. You're not about to run on my girl, not for a second time. So I pulled that knife out and I said, come on, step forward. And I put that on God. I'll fuck your ass up, bitch. My name is Imani Van Zapp. And I am here to help you fix your shit. All right, Chasing LA, week six. All right, you know what? You know what? Okay. 
Okay, you, 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 I, we, let, let's, okay, let's, let's try to get into this. I think this is an effort. I, this was one of the better ones. I definitely gotta say that, okay? Let's break it down into my favorite three. Things I like, things I loathe, and places we can learn, okay? Things I like. King Pain. Baby, I love you this week. I'm gonna let you, you, you crack me up. And for those who don't know, you know, I'm supposed to be having an interview with my baby right after this episode. King Pain, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really didn't take you seriously. I seriously thought that you were just a gimmick. The gal on the show because you just wanted to just make some noise. But just when I was getting ready to reduce you to nothing more than a fan and a bubble coat, you amazed me and came up with a whole hair product line. I love seeing that for you. It made me very happy about you as an entrepreneur. Hershey, now you know I love you every week. This week, I love you because you stayed out of the mess. Whenever this alleyway party that was going on was being had, people were trying to pull you into some dirt and you stayed away. That's how you do it. I'm trying to teach the rest of y'all that. And I gotta put you in this category too, Jayla. Jayla, I was really happy with you this episode. You showed us talent. I wanted to see more of that from you. I don't care what y'all say in this comments. I just want to roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it up. Everything. I loved it. Things I love. What are these sunglasses and mimosas doing at this ass suction glam event that Dee Hawkins was having? You know, it's finally gotten to the point to where as long as you have a glass of alcohol and some sunglasses, it's an event. Y'all have events for everything. The bathroom events. The peanut butter and jelly events. <laughs> if y'all don't stop it. Anyway, I honestly really couldn't get into anything of this ass suction party because you were all so loud. It was a loud, long scene, and I don't know why we had it. Which leads me to the second thing that I still don't know why we have. Why is there so much winter apparel in LA? But educate me. Is it colder than I think? I'm like, every week I'm like, is this not chasing New York? I mean, I just, everyone looks freezing cold. Help me out. And last but not least, this brings me to D Hawkins and Quan. Oh my gosh. I don't understand what this is. For you all to be so talented and so beautiful, have so much potential, I have never seen such rage in all my life. It doesn't make any sense. And it's not even just for the two of y'all screaming about nothing. It's for all of you. I really want to understand, and that's why I've been doing all my interviews on my show. I really want to understand why everyone on this cast is enraged. From what you've told me, nobody's playing it up for the cameras. and none of the storylines are allegedly fake. So this leads me to believe it's really the way that you all handle problems. The other thing I think we can learn too is that it is not a good idea to have an event in an alley. Now listen, I gotta give you your props. It looks like there was a chef in the back, uh, which brought more potential for food that I still didn't see eaten, but it is what it is. But these, this alleyway was so tight, no one stands a chance. How did you film? Who chose this location? This was senseless. So, so y'all know you're watching the season finale. I will do one more review next week about how I feel about chasing LA overall. You do not want to miss that, okay? I love every last one of my babies, okay? No matter what some of these knuckleheads in the comments say, I love all my babies. Once again, this is Imani Van Zap, and I will see you soon. Bye, baby. that everybody came out for the locks of my hair products. Look, if anybody want my hair products, they're available, okay? They're not coming soon. I have a ready stock, okay? Available at the official kingpain.net. But outside of that, everybody had fun. You know, the event was a little bumpy, but we got through it. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's not about all the mess. It's not about these girls and all of the drama that they have. It's about the official King Pain and the launch of my hair products and the event was a success. Overall, the night was pretty good, I must admit. You know, I was chewing, the food was amazing, had some great tacos, the drinks. You know, I must admit, I, I appreciate King for inviting me out because I actually had a good time. There was no noise coming from my way. I was able to focus and just really, you know, be interactive with everybody. And that was my end goal coming here tonight. Whew, we are done. We finally got through an event. We had actual food. 
I had like 12 tacos. Me and Alicia was fucking up tacos up. But King, congratulations. I had a good time. Now you did say you weren't gonna have paper plates, no paper cups, and then you did have paper plates and paper cups. But other than that, we had a good time. Congratulations on your hair care line. I still got it in my bathroom, and I can't wait to the next one. If you really wanna know how I feel, um, I'll be completely honest. When I met Mr. Copeland, to me, he was the ideal life partner. But reality shows that that ain't always the case. I may stand in front of you guys all the time and make it seem like everything's just so beautiful, but at the end of the day, I'm human. I have a heart. And it was really broken. Everybody isn't always as strong as they appear to be when they stand in front of you. Different people handle things differently. But standing here today, I do realize that in this industry, you gotta be tough. You gotta be strong. And you really have to be prepared for any and everything. But I just wanna tell you that I appreciate you because what didn't kill me, it made me stronger. And it inspired me to become a better artist. So thank you. Well, I personally had enough of arguments and alcohol for the day, so I'm just getting ready to go. It was cool while it lasted, but it's getting hot. I'm never wearing no pants and no heels to a function with this group ever again. It's too hot to be in drag and arguing and to be drunk. It's time to go home, girl. <laughs> you better watch those beats. Better watch. Come on. Where the hood niggas at? <laughs> Come on. Follow me. Ooh. As I go up, I see Jayla and she's having fun. My blood is boiling. I still cannot believe that Jayla threw a drink in my face. And although I had to snatch her wig off her head, I am not happy that she would disrespect me in this way for no reason at all. So we got to have a conversation about this. So I see Andre taking his motherfucking coat off, so I'm like, let me go get my heels, and I'm taking my heels off. Putting my slippers on, bitch, because if it's gonna be any work tonight, I'm about to give that word. So I pulled out my knife, because, like I said, nothing's happening today. It's not happening. You're not about to run up on my girl, not for a second time. So I pulled that knife out, and I said, come on, step forward. And I put that on God. on this bullshit because this is up. stupid. Ain't nobody on her for this. Now, Jayla, come on, be a friend because you encouraging this bullshit. I looked at you better than this. I thought you was better than this. Come on now. Lady Hawkins, you don't have the credentials to tell anyone to be a lady because a couple weeks ago, you was looking very washed up, very dusty and crusty. 
Go there. Taylor, come on. Go there. Come on. Stay over there. It's not happening today. It's not happening today. Y'all not acting like girls. Honey, this is that manly shit. Babe. No, because at the end of the day, we all here trying to have a good time. And y'all want to bring this ratchet ass, knife for bullshit. But you see, they, they, they ran away scared like pussy. You hear me? See, you don't want it with me. I'm from DC, Southeast. This is your period. Yeah. And I put that on God. It's your girl Chocolate Beauty. For those of you who don't know me, I am a vlogger in these YouTube streets. If you're interested in reviews on your favorite reality television shows, web series, latest celebrity news, trending hot topics, or all things pop culture, this channel is for you. And if you want to have a more serious discussion about topics that matter, this channel is for you too. So pretty much, I keep you entertained and informed all at the same time. Make sure that you guys follow me under all my social media platforms. You can find me under the hashtag ChocolateBeauty81. Hopefully, I will see you on my channel. Have you been to Old School Flavor? That's right. We're located in downtown Stone Mountain, right outside of Stone Mountain Village. We are one of Stone Mountain's most hidden treasures. We are only open on the weekends from 12 to 9 Fridays and Saturdays and 12 to 6 on Sundays. We are known as the home of the $12 oxtail plate where you can come in on Sundays and get one meat and two sides for just $12. Any other day, you can try our infamous mojo as well as our delicious chicken wings, hamburgers, gyros, and fillies. Come see us at Old School Flavor and savor the flavor. 470-767-8155 Hey y'all, it's your girl Hershey Kiss from Hershey Kiss TV. If you want to see more of me on video, make sure you go to my YouTube and subscribe to my channel, Hershey Kiss TV. That's H-E-R-S-H-E-E -E -E, Kiss TV. Mm-hmm. Here I'll be giving you view bang videos. That's right, the scoop on the best restaurants to eat and the best movies and TV shows to watch while you eat it. I'll also be doing reviews on reality TV shows and music videos. And last but not least, don't forget to click the notification bell for the latest updates. See you later. Bye, y'all. Wake up, sunshine, the brightest sky Follow me on this journey Leave your troubles far behind This year, I learned a lot about this whole experience and meeting new people and being in different circles of friends. Sometimes you might not fit in. People will love you, they'll hate you, but at the end of the day, the only thing you can do is be yourself. And I know for me, I have to stay true to Andre, whether you like it or you don't. Like, I still have a business, I still have a career, I still have things going on, and this group, it won't be the end of me. This group was filled with a lot of haters, but somehow, through all the fray, 
I was able to actually make a few genuine connections. There were definitely a lot of haters in this group, but somehow throughout the fray, I was able to make a genuine connectionship with both Fran and Ian and even Dee Hawkins at the end of this. One thing that I know for sure is that I have to get back to the core of Andre, and that's building my business, shop him, continue to increase my following, and just making an overall name for myself. I'm not new in these LA streets, and no matter what these people try to say about me, I have a long way to go, and I've come a long way also. And I'm not gonna let anybody take that away from me. You better stay tuned, baby, because I'm not done yet. Okay? Listen, I can't stress this enough. We just met each other, so I feel like we had a rough start, but I feel like if we just get a little sand people, paper and buff out some of these edges, we all gonna be all right. We just gotta stop arguing and maybe take, you know, the dark liquor away from our functions and we'll be just fine. All the things that I was concerned about when the pandemic started, I realize now I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be just fine. I'm gonna keep on working and keep my head down. I'm gonna keep my head up. I think my biggest takeaway would be nobody can shade me with my truth. Um, and I need to focus on my own journey and I won't have to worry about what's going on around me. I'm working, baby. I'm gonna continue to work. I'm gonna continue to be that girl. Uh, for the first time in my drag career, actually, every weekend that I have for the next, what, two months is full and I'm working, whether it be in LA or in the surrounding areas. Um, I opened a show for the Drag Race Girls this spring. I might or might not be a dad soon. That's new. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm sweating because this is a lot. Life is moving like it's supposed to be moving and I'm not complaining whatsoever. I am on the way, bitch. Hershey is on the way, girls. <laughs> Make room or get moved. Period. And you choose to add this or not if you want to. Mind your business is tax-free legal in all 50 states. It costs you nothing to do it. Thank you. <laughs> So what I learned from being in this group of individuals this year is that I'm still that girl. Very much so. And the girls can't take me. And that's just the whole period. So I'm here in LA and I'm here to stay. So next for the official campaign, I'm looking for a house. You know, um, I'm getting back into my producer thing. I'm looking for new artists. I'm actually pursuing my own career as a musician. I've made some really cool friends. Uh, I, I became friends with a poet. I got this new homegirl, she's a singer. Um, I'm friends with an actor on stars now. Um, I'm, I know drag queens, like it's up. Like, I'm really loving you know, being out here in LA and meeting all these cool people. I'm gonna take my music and my producing in a whole nother direction. I'm getting ready to rebrand and rebuild my hair business and COVID is over. COVID is up now. So I, I look forward to performing around town and, and really making a name for myself out here in LA. <laughs> So my honest opinion of the whole group and the year, um, I must say was one to remember. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about, you know, being in the space and the mix with other creative energies and, and other individuals, you know. And this past year, to be honest, was a very difficult one for me. Um, I was dealing with a lot of personal distractions in my life. Um, we all were, you know, living and trying to just make it in this global pandemic. And this opportunity came around at a pretty good time for me, you know, to really just get back out there and just show who I am to the world. Overall, what I can say that is that I did meet a few individuals who I can honestly say are my friends, people that I can see myself kicking it with on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's always good, you know, because I feed off good vibes, good energy with people, and I think that's very important, especially in these crazy times that we're all living in. I must be honest, out of everyone in the group, I think I particularly, you know, struggled the most with trying to tap into an industry that we're all trying to be successful in, you know, because I have a full-time job, my mom was sick, you know, I'm in a relationship, um, we're living in a global pandemic, and 
trying to get out there as a fresh face, you know, with a fresh start, you know, around new people, not really knowing how to network properly in LA when everything is closed down was a struggle. Some of the things that I got in the works, you guys, is music coming up, new brands that I'm collaborating with, and just really just moving forward and just becoming a better person within myself. And, um, you know, I'm excited about what the future is about to hold. And, you know, I can't wait. You know, it's a work in progress with me. So what you see is what you get. crazy crazy group is um interesting um i learned a lot um i think they're good people but very crazy and some of them may need to go check up and see a doctor i definitely learned to um ignore a lot of shit i definitely have grown tougher skin and i learned that i'm that bitch i've learned that i am amazing I've learned that people are gonna always run their mouth. They're gonna always talk out their dick suckers. But I've learned just to ignore it, keep it pushing, and keep on trucking. I'm going to continue to record my podcast because it's something that I love to do, and I hope you guys love to listen to me. So this is definitely not the last that you will see of Alicia Love. You're definitely gonna see me on billboards and TV screens, and just being the star that I am. And on that note, I did what needed to be done. experience has been phenomenal i'm just so happy and so blessed to be a part of this cast honestly one great person that i can call my friend from this experience would be king pain and you know what they say what's a king without his queen and as far as my music you guys can definitely expect more projects more music videos and way more songs i'm so excited for you guys to see what the things that i'm coming up with and for me myself jayla jaylon you can definitely expect me to be living it up chasing my dreams and becoming the best version of myself i can become around this group has been a lot but I am just so thankful that I've been able to meet some wonderful people some very talented people and honestly I've made bonds that I think are going to last for years and years and years I'm glad that at this point me and Alicia are good that's my baby mama King we family Jayla Hershey Jeremy look we are one big happy family over here Everyone else is everyone else, and I'm fine with all of that. I know I could be a little angry, a little petty, I could pop off a little too quick at times, but that's okay, I'm a work in progress. So what's next for me? Baby, it's some more poetry, more poetry, more poetry. Oh yes, this fall, a poetry and spoken word EP will be dropping. And baby, trust, this is going to take you on a whole nother level of poetry and spoken word. And you never know, you know, I've been working on a few things, so you might see me pop up in a streaming service somewhere. And trust, this is not the last you have seen of Quan the Poet. You will see me very, very soon. Keep your eyes open. This past year in particular has been absolutely crazy for me. And definitely as I look back, they say hindsight is 2020. One thing I could definitely take away is that I'm actually someone who can take on a whole bunch of hats. I think sometimes I doubt myself. I have a lot of anxiety and worry. Even as a battle rapper, a lot of people see me and they're like, how are you able to do that? And then flying here to do stuff for your business. And then you're performing here and doing music. How are you able to do that so confidently when the truth is on the inside I'm shitting bricks so one thing I've learned about being with this group is 
I'm amongst a bunch of people who are a lot different than me. So I'm noticing that people are pretty sensitive about things that I just really don't care about. And one thing that pe a lot of people in this group have that I don't have is a fuck. I just don't give a fuck. So when people say certain things, I'm not all bent out of shape off every little thing somebody says and dragging it and dragging it and dragging it. If I have an issue, I address it and I've moved on. So upcoming moving forward from this past crazy year you can expect to see more from my business my brand royale flyness um you can expect to see more music from me i will be releasing my next album you can't expect more battles from the only gay nigga with a straight reputation of fly king eye himself so be sure you guys all stay tuned At this point, in my most comfortable state, you've got to see a lot of different sides of D. Hawkins. So my takeaway from this is, hey, you got to get it how you live. A young boy from the South, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But hey, I came here, I hit the ground running, I'm happy about it. All of my coming soons, they came, and now they're being seen. What can I say? I'm multi-talented. Everybody can't take it, but I know that that gathers your attention. So as it currently stands, I can honestly say that I have actually developed real friends. Stay tuned on how that goes. You never know. As far as what's coming next, D. Hawkins is gonna stay creative. I learned a lot. I learned that you can't trust everybody. And just because you're a young boy from the South does not mean that everybody's gonna receive you for being just that. So in the end, in my opinion, it's a pretty dynamic group. Full of talent, whether you're from LA, born in LA, drove to LA, or flew to LA. We all chasing, so remember that. As far as the winning team goes, you know who you are. Keep shining, and keep getting these bitches together. Now, for you others, Miss Potato Head, Quan, Miss Alicia, Miss Thing, try again next time, because it didn't really work this time. And Mr. Copeland, Hopefully, we can reconcile at a later date. Just stay tuned because I've only got greater to get to. I cannot believe we are here. It has been a long journey, a long ride, a couple months with this new group of people that Q introduced me to. I was not aware of what I was gonna get myself into. I made some friends, I made some semi-enemies, but Overall, I had a good time. I think that you guys really got to see the good and the bad. I mean, we all hung out together during a pandemic, so we had to make it work, and I think that we did. To be honest, I've learned that everyone has a story. Everyone has a reason as to why they do what they do. Everyone has different intentions, but you really have to be steadfast focused on why you do what you do, why you do what you love, and not let things distract you because you never know what people's intentions are. So just stay focused and don't let anyone get you out of character. I have definitely gained more tough skin. Lord Jesus, going from a pandemic to being around a bunch of strangers will really drive you nuts. But I do feel like I've created some great relationships in the group. Hopefully it will blossom to become friends. I don't know, we'll see, but I think so far everyone is pretty cool and pretty talented and I'll keep them in my life for now. What's next for Jeremy? Well, I don't know. Um, you can catch me on Stars, Step Up. I'm excited about that, it's now playing. Uh, you can catch me on the new Amazon Prime series called Slay, which is coming out very soon. We're in production for that. You can catch Taja Cobb's new album, Femula. We shot a bunch of dope music videos that's out now, raining fellas. I'm like butt naked. I know y'all want to see that. <laughs> we are here. We chased LA. We did what we can do in the middle of a pandemic. We were in a national crisis and we still came out strong and do what we had to do. And I think now that we all have met each other, we can really focus on why we came here and that's to chase. We're going to chase and it's going to be in LA. Stay tuned. And I am counting, counting, I am